you faithful. Good afternoon. The legislative public hearing on block grants is hereby called to order. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Representative Katie Dempsey, representing the people of District 13. The other co-chairman, uh, Senator Unterman, may be joining us in just a little bit. I know she had a meeting in the governor's office. She represents the people of District 45. Um, also, I, to my left, I have Leo Chancy representing the House Budget and Research Office, and Jared Evans representing the Senate Budget and Evaluation Office. R. R Demetrius Taylor, Budget Director for the Department of Human Services, and Mary Price, the Chief Financial Officer for Development for the Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities. Before we get started, is there anyone here who requires sign language interpreter services? If you would just raise your hand so we could be aware of that. I am not seeing any, but we'll wait just a little bit longer before y'all leave and just make sure that um, we have that in case. Thank you for attending today's block grant hearing. The purpose of the hearing is to receive public comments on the use of five human services block grants that Georgia receives from the federal government. The hearing also provides the members of the Georgia legislature the opportunity to listen to the views of private citizens and other interested parties on how block grant funds should be used for the state fiscal year 2018, which will begin July 1, 2017. These block grants are Community Mental Health Block Grant, Community Services Block Grant, Low Income Home Energy Assistant Block Grant, Social Services Block Grant, Substance Abuse Prevention and Treatment Block Grant. Public input is an important aspect of the deliberative process that the Georgia Legislature undertakes in making decisions about the state's budget. Thank you for taking the time to participate in this process. At this time, R. Demetrius Taylor will provide a brief summary of the grants and explain how we will proceed. Please welcome Mr. Taylor. Thank you, Representative Katie Dempsey. As Representative Dempsey has told you, the Department of Human Services will receive public comments on three federal block grants today. By federal law, Georgia is required to hold public hearings on these grants. These three grants are the Community Services Block Grant, the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Block Grant, and the Social Services Block Grant. At this time, I will give you a brief overview of these grants. The Community Services Block Grant provides funds and services for and activities that impact the causes of poverty and to assist low income participants. These funds are distributed throughout local agencies throughout the state, and they fund a wide range of services, including employment, education, meals and nutrition services, and housing services. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Block Grant provides cash assistance to qualified low income households for home energy costs, weatherization costs, such as insulation, caulking, and weather stripping, to reduce energy consumption and for energy crisis intervention. Finally, the Social Services Block Grant funds various services such as daycare services for children, adults and persons with mental retardation, home delivered meals, homemaker services, transportation, and protective services for adults and children. This grant also assists families to achieve and or maintain economic self-support and self-sufficiency. At this time, Mary Price, the Departmental, Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities Chief Financial Officer, will provide a list and a brief summary of her agency's grants. Thank you, Demetrius. Good afternoon. The Department of Behavioral Health and Developmental Disabilities will receive public comment on two federal block grants today. The two grants are the Community Mental Health Services Block Grant and the Substance Abuse Prevention Treatment Block Grant. Here's a brief overview of the two grants. 
The Community Mental Health Services Block Grant provides funding for the implementation of the Mental Health State Plan, providing services for adult, to adults with serious mental illness and for children that suffer with serious emotional disturbance. The Substance Abuse Prevention Block Grant provides funding for community-based substance abuse treatment, drug treatment program services, prevention, and early intervention uh, programs. Thank you. Now I will return it back to Demetrius to continue the proceedings. Thank you, Ms. Price. More details about each of these grants, including types of programs that can be funded and their proposed funding levels are included in the color-coded pamphlets that are available on the table outside. There are a separate pamphlet for each grant. Before receiving comments, let me go over a few ground rules. We will take speakers in the order in which they sign up to speak. If you have not signed up yet, you may do so at the table outside. Please give us your name and the name of the organization you represent. If there's more than one representative from the same agency, please choose one from your organization to speak. By doing this, we will ensure that each organization and citizen gets a fair chance to comment. You will be given five minutes in which to present your comments. There is a timekeeper who will let you know when you have one minute left. I will initially call two speakers to the podium at a time. As the first person is speaking, the, set, the next speaker should be making his or her way to the podium. Then as I call your name, please make your way to the podium. If you have any written comments for your record or a copy of your speech, please place them on the table outside after the meeting. Now let's begin. First, I'd like to call Joanne Mathis with the, from the Georgia Council on Aging, followed by Joanne, then we'll be calling Don Alford from Georgia Council on Developmental Disabilities. Good afternoon, Chairman Dempsey, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Joanne Mathis, and I am the Legislative Chair for the Georgia Council on Aging. As part of its advisory responsibility to state government, the Council would like to address the allocation of social services block grant funding for seniors. SSBG funds are allocated to local communities through the Division of Aging Services and administered by the Area Agencies on Aging. These funds provide for services that enable older Georgians to continue living in their own homes, in their own communities. In FY16 and the first part of FY17, Services such as home delivered meals, adult daycare, caregiver respite, and transportation often delayed or completely prevented costly nursing home placement. SSBG funds can also be used to assist adults who are leaving institutional care to return to the community. As the number of reports of elder abuse, neglect, and exploitation continue to arise, SSBG money goes toward expanding the work of adult protective services. We are seeing a heightened focus from law enforcement on arresting and prosecuting these cases. SSBG funding for APS makes a significant difference in Georgia's ability to prevent further victimization. SSBG, SSBG funds also enhance the protection afforded to residents of long-term care facilities through the state's long-term care ombudsman program. As a result of this SSBG funding, many older Georgians can remain in their homes longer with the help of home and community-based services, can be protected from continued abuse, neglect, and exploitation, can receive increased protection while living in long-term care facilities. Georgia's older adult population is the fastest growing segment in the state. 
increasing by 45% in the last decade, compared to 18% for the state um, as a whole and 15% for children under age 19. By using SSBG funds to provide these vital services to our seniors, Georgia can continue to serve some of the most vulnerable among our growing elderly population. Thank you. I'll be glad to answer any questions if you have any. I don't have any, I don't think. Thank okay, you. Thank, thank you. you for the good work that you do. Thank you, Ms. Mathis. Now, Don Alfred, please. Testing. Okay. Madam Chair, committee members, thank you for this opportunity to speak. I, my name is Dawn Alford, and I'm with the Georgia Council on Developmental Disabilities. The mission of the Georgia Council on Developmental Disabilities is to bring about social and policy changes that promote opportunities for people with developmental disabilities and their families to live, learn, work, play, and worship in Georgia communities. We understand that this hearing is for the Human Services Block Grants that have been in existence for many years in Georgia. We, as always, urge you to consider Georgians with developmental disabilities as you make decisions. On the topic of Block Grants, we would just like to briefly take a moment as well to express concern over any plan that involves the Block, granti block Granting of Medicaid while there is no way to be certain about what Georgia will indeed do if faced with block grants and reduced federal funds for Medicaid, we know that there would be real life consequences for people with developmental disabilities, such as losing home and community-based services, the waiting lists could grow and exacerbate the number of Georgians waiting for a Medicaid waiver. Currently in Georgia, there are over 8,698 people waiting for a DD waiver. Can we afford to, wait, to make that wait list any longer than it currently is? Unnecessarily being institutionalized, states could return to the days of warehousing people with disabilities in institutions, shifting the cost to individuals or family members to make up for federal cuts, the cost of providing health care and long-term services and supports won't go away. Rather, it will be shifted to individuals, parents, states, and providers. Children could lose valuable screenings, services, and therapies if the early and periodic screening, diagnosis, and treatment benefit is dismantled. Access to these important services enable children to lead healthy and more active lives continue to live at home with their families, and one day become a taxpayer themselves by working in the community. So we just ask that as you consider the future of Georgia, we ask that you consider any and all of the possible implications of any changes to Medicaid. So if should block grants become the future of Medicaid in Georgia, we ask that you allow us to join you in creating a framework, framework to minimize damage to individuals with disabilities and their families. And we hope that you would consider just including us in the conversation and that we could be in, at the table. So again, we thank you for this time to hear our comments and concerns, and I'd be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Okay. I don't think we have any. Are there any from any of the appropriations members that happen to be here today to I don't hear any, so thank you. Thank you for bringing your concerns forward. Thank you, Ms. Alford. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? If so, please approach the podium and give us your name and the name of the organization you represent. I'd like to thank each of you for attending today's hearing. Would any member of the panel like to speak? Okay. Thank you. I'd like to thank Leo Chancey with the House Budget and Research Office, Representative Katie Denson, uh, Senator Renee Unterman, and Jared Evans for the, from the Senate uh, Budget and Evaluation Office. Now I'll turn it back over to Representative Katie Denson for closing. 
Well, I thank y'all for being here, and I thank, um, as I look around the room, I see an awful lot of people who do some very valued work to help people in need in our state, so I thank you for the work you do every day. And with that, this block grant hearing is adjourned. Thank you so much. <laughs>